What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. Oh, man. This wasn't meant to happen. But they made me do it. They've made me do it. Last of Us 2. All right, so we're going to do... Well, not so much a review, but a discussion about the game, yeah? Oh, so disappointing. You wait seven years, and then this is what they give us. Unbelievable. So you built an entire franchise on these two characters, Ellie and Joel. You get a taste of success. Well, they have do have Uncharted as well. Right. A new IP in Last of Us. You stick the landing, everybody loves it. And in the next game, you proceed to just destroy the characters that have made that franchise. Ellie and Joel carry the whole Last of Us franchise on their back. People were excited because Last of Us 2 was an opportunity to play with Ellie and Joel. And in this game, you give everybody the opposite. Why not just make the game, if you wanted to make a brand new game with Abby, why didn't you just make a brand new franchise with Abby? Because she don't have a story to tell with Abby and Joel. She doesn't. And the reason you know this is because they wrap up everything to do with her and Joel in the first few minutes of the game. In a nutshell, Joel killed the killer doctor in Last of Us 1. The daughter of the killer doctor wants to come after Joel. Job done. Story done. Well then, the rest of the story is Ellie goes after the daughter of the killer doctor that killed Joel. Loses twice. Comes back a third time. Kind of wins. But then lets her go. But, uh, but in the end. The main character of the whole franchise. Loses everything. Come on man. Come on. That's it. That's The Last of Us 2. Part 2. In a nutshell. It's ridiculous man. It's truly ridiculous. I don't understand the thinking of this. I liken it to this. Yeah. You got. I'm going to give you an example. Of the salt. Imagine. If in Death May Cry 5. You had Dante. And then. V. Came into the game. Brand new character. Don't even know who he is. And within the first hour of the game. He kills Dante. And then Nero goes after V because Dante's his uncle. And then V beats Nero every single time they meet. But by the end of the game, Nero fights V, beats him, but then spares him. Do you understand the hellfire and brimstone that would have been brought upon Capcom if they did that? They would never do something so silly anyway. So I don't even know why I'm saying that. But Last of Us does basically that. They basically murder the main character that built their franchise in the most savage way possible. By Abby. I don't even care about Abby. Who is Abby? She means nothing to me. I just don't get it, man. They just make Ellie so unlikable. There's like no character development in the whole game. There's no character that has any type of character development. It's mad. Best two characters in that whole game called Yara and Lev. Two best characters in that whole game. I just feel like the creators, Naughty Dog, have contempt for their fan base. That's literally how I feel. Because the whole game feels like they just want to punish you for playing the game and then judge you for the actions you take in that game even though there are no 
branching elements to the story. You could only follow one narrative. But then you get punished for playing the game. For going through the story. For the decisions that are already made for you. You get punished for them. Yeah, I thought like at no point in this game was I allowed to have fun. As well as having like a garbage story. Yeah. I mean, most of the story, let's be honest, this is Abby's tale. Yeah. And what she did had nothing to do with Joel. Nothing to do with Ellie. That game, that whole game, Abby was the hunted. But she didn't even know she was the hunted. And by the time she realised she was the hunted, she'd already beat the hunter. Come on, man. I mean, normally, to have an enemy like Ellie and let her live, you've either got to be three things. Brave, stupid, or super, super, ultra, mega, galactic, godlike, right? I don't know which one of the three Abby is, but, you know. So, yeah, man, I just don't know, man. That game just puzzled me. You know, you have an open, they give Ellie, like an open sandbox game, yeah? Well, to inhabit. And then there's a lot of buildings, a lot of gas stations, sky rises, buildings, abandoned warehouses. And inside those buildings, you have doors. Drawers, cupboards, tables, and you know what's um, on top of the tables, and in the drawers, and doors and cupboards, resources, upgrading resources, letters, information about certain characters that lived inside of that world, and that's it. That's the best they could do with such a massive open world. The world was so sparse, right? It's literally like a bigger version of Last of Us 1. There's no innovation with the gameplay. The gameplay is exactly the same as the first game, right? There is... The weapons are basically very, very similar, right? Except Abby gets like the best weapons in the game. She gets a, a bigger arsenal... Yeah, of melee weapons and weapons, right? She just gets, she gets given everything. I mean, why does Abby get the crossbow? I mean, I guess a bow is good, but crossbow's the best. Why does Abby get that? I don't understand it, right? She got all the best set pieces. She got all the characters to interact with, you know? At least they showed a little bit of Abby being like, you know, a dickhead. And then becoming less of a dickhead towards the people around her. You know what I mean? Because at the beginning of the game, she was like, she was a dickhead to all her friends. And she became less of a dickhead towards the game's ending, right? And then she came across that character, um, Yara, who's an amazing character that literally saved Abby, you know, from dying. And then Lev, who saved Yara... From dying and in the process save Abby, right? And then Yara dies, you know, she gets murdered by the WLF, the wolves, right? In like, you know, horrific. She just gets basically peppered by bullets while she's on the floor. Like, they just give the best characters the most horrific deaths, man. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. You know? I mean... I don't know. I really don't understand the, um, the philosophy behind the story, behind the ideas of this game. I just feel like they didn't want you to have fun. They didn't want you to enjoy this game in the slightest. You know, you play with Ellie, right? And in Ellie... You'll come across an area and there'll be like, say, six enemies, yeah? Six guards patrolling that area. 
to get past that area, you have to kill everybody in your way. And those people are blocking the path in which you are going on, right? You might throw a bottle, yeah, to distract them. Then two of the guards, they go in pairs to go to where it's dis the distraction, where the sound was, where you just threw the bottle. And then you just shoot one of them. Yeah, and one of them dies, and then you try to go for the other one, yeah, and as you're sneaking up on them, the other person notices the other person is dead, and the person goes, oh no, they killed Jesse, and you're like, what, wow, they just said the person, they just said the person's name, isn't that just the NPC, right, and then the person will call and say, Barry, they got Jesse, and then Barry will say, I am, stay there, Andy, I'm coming. Stay there. Stay where you are. And then Andy's like so pissed that I just killed, you know, playing with Ellie, killed Jesse. That he's like, no, I'm I'm going after them. I'm going after them. And he just says all type of mad stuff saying they want to get revenge or they can't believe um, Jesse is dead. And it just makes you feel like, oh, I just... Jesse, huh? Okay. Damn. And they just try to humanize the enemies that you're killing, right? Like, what is that? That doesn't doesn't make sense. Doesn't mean anything. But then on Abby's side, she's killing the Seraphites. And the Seraphites are dehumanized into oblivion, right? You know, they're all like killing people and gutting them and Pulling out their internal organs and then saying, now they are free. Now they are free. And all this type of like weird stuff. So you've got Abby, you know, surrounded by people to have interactions with. Killing the most dehumanised, um, well not the most, because the most dehumanised creatures in the game are the clickers, you know. And the um, infected, you know, let's go, get that confused. But in terms of human characters, human, you know, faction, the Seraphites, also known as the Scars, yeah, they are just dehumanized so that when you do kill them, you don't feel any type of remorse or regret. It's all to make Abby look like the superhero. That's why I think, that's why I say Abby, she's like the most terror, one of the most terrifying characters in video game history. Because she is a killer. A terror. And she has no punishment. None whatsoever. There's like no... She gets... There's nothing. Nothing bad happens to her for what she does in that game. But Ellie, she gets it. You know, it's just like the whole actions of the game are just there to serve Abby's purpose, to serve El Abby's journey and Ellie is just an afterthought, right? And then I do feel like people say, oh, maybe Joel got what he deserved. How? What, from Last of Us 1? When he killed um, Robert. No, actually, he didn't kill Robert. I think it was, what's her name again? I think, was it Tess? Or something like that, the woman. It was a woman that killed um, Robert, so it wasn't even Joel, right? The countless of um, PMCs that were trying to kill Joel, or the bandits that were trying to kill him. Um, sorry, that were trying to kill Joel and Ellie. Who? Maybe it was the hospital. Joel killed Ethan, that worthless PMC. A bunch of PMCs, which I thought that fight was godlike, by the way. Right, and then I don't know what Naughty Dog are talking about. The killer doctor and his assistant, I shot them in the leg. Right, so they but they went down like a stack of dimes. Yeah, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I didn't kill them. If they put in the narrative story that they died, no problem. Why didn't they just put options where your story translates from one game to another if they want to have such massive, um repercussions to your actions that affects the whole landscape of the game and the world if you really want to make a massive game 
with such massive implications on your decisions, why not make it branch in storyline? Like Mass Effect 1. You play Mass Effect 1, you know, you can save an entire race, uh, right, in Mass Effect 1. Right, and then that leads into Mass Effect 2, and that story passes into Mass Effect 3. And then by the end battle in Mass Effect 3, the outcome is more favourable to you because you have an entire race that is on your side. But if in Mass Effect 1, you choose to help the, you know, the, I don't know, the galactic fleet or the galactic uh, force, whatever they're called, of nations of uh, every, everybody in the galaxy, right, to help facilitate that disease that will wipe out an entire race that will transfer to Mass Effect 1, 2 and then 3 and then by the end battle in Mass Effect 3 the battle is a little bit you don't know what's going to happen you know there's more chance of you losing and then you have to take a different path a different storyline appears because the race that were wiped out in the other um, alternative decision making that you could have done weren't there in the final game right so it was like massive implications on based of your decisions but at least they gave you an option same thing like witcher there's characters in witcher that i made decisions and they didn't make it to the next to witcher uh three and i had to deal with that but it was my decision i made that decision and then that translates to uh, Witcher 3. I got other friends that made different decisions where other characters are gone, are dead in their playthroughs, but they're alive in my ones, right? Because the decisions that they made. At least the game gives you the choice. This game doesn't give you a choice. It just says, this character's gonna die in this most brutal, savage way, and you're gonna pay for it. Your character is going to suffer and bear the repercussions of that decision, oh yeah, that you didn't make, but it's the story and the character's got to suffer because everybody in this whole world is morally corrupt in this broken, eat, um, savage, dog-eat-dog -dog world. Dog-eat-dog -dog world. Even though in Jackson, everybody seems to be living quite civilised. And then where the WLF, um, WLF headquarters is, they seem to be living quite civilised. And then you've got um, Ellie on this side, yeah? Fighting against WLF, you know, um, killing hundreds. At this point, thousands. If we're including Last of Us 1, she's killed thousands of people. She killed hundreds of people before she hit her 15th birthday, right? She's a killer. When she killed, the first person she killed in Last of Us 1... She said, I just shot the hell out of that guy. That was her the first words that came out of her mouth after she just killed somebody. Like, you know, let's not get it twisted. Ellie is a monster, right? But Abby's an even bigger monster and she's got the keys to the kingdom. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then of course, you know, they, they make Ellie as unlikable and unrelatable as possible mean to everybody you know she kills somebody like i remember there's a bit of a sewer where you're infiltrating the wlf headquarters because you're going after nora right and then you swim and then you find like some woman playing the psp listen to some music you go up on her and then you hold the knife to her throat and then you say to her where's nora and then that the woman's like easy easy nora's upstairs you know, she is in the medical bay, which you can get to easily. No problem. Ellie looks like she's thinking about it. And that's when the woman tries to take the knife and stab Ellie with her own knife. She grabs um, um, Ellie. And then Ellie stops her. And it seems like the woman's not going to stop. So she just stabs the woman in the throat. Fast forward to Abby's story. You see that same woman is a nice, kind woman that actually allocates the WLF resources to all different members and the, that kind of trend goes throughout the whole game you know you'll have like a, a particular cutscene where Ellie like just guts a dog go to Abby's story then you find like a bit where they rate their kennel where they're racing dogs and a dog that looked awfully like the dog in that cutscene 
where Ellie just like gutted that dog. That dog is in Abby's storyline. You know, where El um, Abby actually pets that dog. And that dog's got a name. So you've got Ellie killing elf people and uh, um, with names and then slaughtering dogs. While you've got Abby saving zebras, protecting dogs, lives in a place where they've got schools, gym facilities, a um, place where they train, a canteen, medical bay, all that type of stuff. It's ridiculous, man. What are we doing here? What are we doing? And then, of course, you know, they give Abby all the best set pieces. She gets the mission, which is a godlike mission where she was going to the medical bay, right, to get the um, some medical supplies for Yara, right, because Yara got her arm. When, she, um, when Yara, you know, appeared, which kind of, like, saved Abby, she was getting her arm hammered off, right? Like, they hammered off her arm. That sounds pretty grim when I say it like that. But it did anyway. And Abby was going to get resources to try to save her. But she had to go to some deep, dark depths of a hospital. Where all the, the actual very first generation of infected are. And down there was some horrific, terrifying boss. Which was done very, very well, might I add. Right? And even that boss, the Rat King, is what his name was, right? That boss was actually hella scary and has got a godlike story. It's mad. Like, the story of that boss, basically, is that area was when the first wave of people that got infected, they got taken down to the, the lowest depths of that hospital and they were just, like, quarantined and sealed off in there after they turned into the infected and they locked them up in there and they couldn't get out. But then because this, they have been like manifested there for decades, they like hundreds, literally hundreds of people fused to make that abomination, the Rat King. So it's got like a godlike story, you know, and that's another thing that's good about that game, right? Is there's like little short stories of areas. So you come across an area where you see like a lot of death and misery. If you find all the notes, they actually compile a story of what happened in that area. You know, for example, like when um, Abby is going to get Owen and you come across like some desolate ship in the middle of the ocean. That ship was actually a ship that was taking survivors to an isolated island. But then they had some people that were ill complaining but they thought some people thought that they were just cease they were having seasickness or some people thought they might be infected the captain made an area where they quarantined those people but the vice um captain was a little bit edgy a little bit unstable and paranoid right and then she knew that there was a ex-military person on there and then she had told that person can you go down there and get those people and he did that he got some of the people but he didn't get all of them right but then she thought he would be infected as well. So she actually killed him and killed everybody while they were asleep. And then she planted the crossbow on him just to make it look like it was him. And she went about her business. But then the captain found out that it was her that actually killed everybody in their sleep, including him, tried to frame him. She had to, And the captain and the vice captain had a fight. And then the captain won, but he still tried to get the ship as close to shore as possible. That's the story of that ship. So, and I know that just from reading all the notes that you find scattered and the diaries of the survivors and the captain, right? So that's what I'm saying. There's like interesting little stories within The Last of Us 2, right? But they're in the notes. But I've always liked that. That's why I like Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3. Because they have, they were in Raccoon City and in the mansion, which detailed a lot of, there was a lot of survivors and researchers and undercover agents that writ diaries, notes. They had memoirs and they, they writ their last will testaments and all this type of stuff for you to read it and find out what happened in the moments before, after or during or, you know, before into the situation and then when they died, you know, so... Last of Us has got like a lot of that stuff, right? But they just 
kill the game before the game even starts, man. Like, they killed Joel. It, it's stupid to me. That character, godlike, man. That character is godlike. I mean, I may like him for the wrong reasons. Because I'll be very honest with you. I like how savage Joel was in that game. Right? You know, how he was to... He, how he became close to Ellie and started to love her by the towards the ending of the game after she basically was trying to save Joel because Joel impaled himself and she was taking care of Joel for weeks you know just nursing him back to health and then she went to get food for Joel came across some evil twisted bandits right that would do some type of skullduggery to human beings right they had mad horrific plans for Ellie right Ellie managed to fight her way and kill hundreds of them on her own and then she actually beat the ringleader of this cult bandit gang that had been hunting Ellie and Joel throughout that pretty much throughout that whole game right she got them on she, she got him on her own when she was 14 years old she had god like and that was the moment where joel was like i'm so sorry baby girl i'm sorry i couldn't protect you you know that was the moment that you realized joel that's his sarah that's his daughter his new daughter he's got a second chance and before you got a second game that could emphasize more of that amazing journey more they kill him off these people, man, are crazy. Naughty dog. They're mad. They're mad. The decision making is atrocious. Atrocious decision making. You know what? Whatever. Whatever, man. Like, I'm done, man. I'm done. You know, I'm glad. I never paid for that game. I'm so happy that game is a true dumpster fire, right? That I don't want to be part of, right? And I was never going to give Naughty Dog my money. Like, no, no way. And I'm glad I didn't. And people that did pay for it, pissed. Pissed. Because you care, basically, to support them, but they don't care to give you an adventure or a story that you would enjoy. They just want to put out some controversial bullshit just for the sake of it. Call it artistic or some type of commentary on society. And it doesn't mean anything. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. You know. And they just, you know, as I said, they give... Abby everything, you know, she gets the best set pieces like the sniper mission that she goes on. That sniper mission is godlike, right? It's like the but I do feel like they ripped that from Last of Us 1. That's just how I feel, right? And then you have um it's godlike because you find out that it's actually Tommy, right? Because near the beginning of the game, you go on like a like a backstory mission. Where Tommy's teaching Ellie how to shoot the affected from afar. Godlike. And then you see it in practical real time. How godlike he is with a sniper. Like you stick your head up even an inch or a centimetre and he'll take it off. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right? So you see how godlike Tommy actually is. Right? And I loved it. When he killed um, Manny... One of the people that was there when Joel died, I love that. Shot him in the back of the head and the bullet came out of his eye. I love that. What do you think? I like Manny. After he spat on Joel's dead body, are you joking me? Even the fact that that's happened is mad to me. You play Last of Us 1, you're going to be pissed. Because you're going to look at Joel, carry on godlike, godlike, and then realise this character is that he's a dead man. He ain't got no future. That sucks, bro. That truly does suck, man. It's like... Decision making is so bad, man. 
you wait seven years and they give you this character assassination on top of assassinated main godlike characters in exchange for some nothing character. I'm done with Abby. That character is a dead character to me. That character might as well not exist, man. Why, as I said, why did they just make a new game and put Abby, Yara, and Lev in it? That game would have carried itself. You know what, yeah? In an alternate reality, I might have even liked Abby. Abby would have been... I feel... I, I tried to separate myself from the whole situation. Say, if she didn't kill Joel and made the enemy of Ellie, just did her own story, maybe I would have liked her. I don't know. But that's something we'll never know. Because I do know that Lev and Yara, godlike. Especially Lev, amazing. Amazing characters. You know? But then even when you look at it, yeah, you got certain characters in that game, like Dana. She didn't mean nothing. I did not enjoy... I mean, put it this way. She offered nothing in terms of the gameplay. She only really brought relevance, I'd say, to the game after you find out that she's pregnant. Right, and then when you play with Abby, when you start playing with Abby, I kind of felt myself missing Dana. Because I was just so sick and tired and bored of looking at Abby's face. The only time that I felt any type of um, joy playing with Abby was when Ellie was killing her. And I think I must have let Ellie kill Abby I will say maybe about 20 times. Like, I loved it. It was so therapeutic. I found it, I think, what's the word? I think, is it cathartic? I don't know if that's the right word, right? Let's just say I found it very freeing and joyful watching Ellie kill Abby over and over again. How the hell are you going to try to put me against Ellie, you're mad. You're mad, bro. You tried to, like the decision making. It's crazy. It's crazy. You you have a whole game and then you dedicate half the game to playing with a character that means nothing. She just killed Joel, man. Don't you understand that character? You know, they just literally invalidate Last of Us 1. The events of Lost of Us 1, they just invalid. It's almost like took, they've literally just done a Terminator. What is it? Dark Resurrection? Dark Fates? I don't know. Whatever. The newest Terminator that came out like, I don't know when it came out. 2000, 2017, 2018, 2019. I don't know when. I can't remember when it comes came out, nor do I care. Right? But in that film, yeah, they killed John Connor in the beginning of, the, of that film. Which basically renders the whole events of Terminator 2, one of the greatest movies in history, redundant. It was all for nothing. Everything that happened in Terminator 2 was wiped out in Terminator, the newest Terminator, because they killed John Connor. Even that one winds me up. I'm, I should stop thinking about that actually annoying me right i just don't understand it man and then you make this next game it's not even about joel or ellie it's about abby and she gets like the incredible you know riding on horseback through haven the main place of the seraphites incredible set piece riding a horse in a town or city or, or area, whatever you want to call it, that is on fire. You know, shooting all the Seraphites, incredible. The whole kind of scenario where Abby was going to save Lev was actually pretty godlike, man. I'm not going to go into details into every single thing that happened in the whole story. Because I'm assuming if you're watching this, you already know about Last of Us. And I don't really want to talk about the story, you know. But um, essentially... Lev and Yara, they're escaping from the Seraphites. Their mother is one of the um, leaders of the Seraphites. Lev wants forgiveness, goes and um, steals a boat. 
goes to the um, Seraphite um, headquarters on on his own. I think it's yeah, I think it's a him. Yeah, yeah, it's him. Yeah, on his own, but he doesn't really want to go back there because he's being forced into a marriage or a relationship that he doesn't want to be in. Right, Abby, Yara, go after him, kill a bunch of Seraphites, find Lev. In the end, Lev has killed the mum because the mum was going crazy and trying to kill Lev. That's their story, right? And then Abby goes to, um, basically saves Lev, gets out of there. It is what it is, you know. And then, you, of course, you've got um, Ellie on the other side. Scenario, you've got a guy and a woman. Ellie's asking for information. They're not giving the information. The guy tries to grab the gun off of Ellie. Ellie shoots him. Then the woman jumps on Ellie, stabs Ellie in the shoulder, right? Ellie manages to get the sword knife out, reverses it, stabs the woman in the neck, then goes to the guy to get information from him. The guy says, pregnant. Oh my God, are you for real? Ellie quickly goes to the woman, unzips her jacket and sees the woman's pregnant. So now, Ellie, on top of killing people, you know, with families and names, you know, gutting dogs, now she just ki killed a pregnant lady. And and the and the father, mad, mad, killing hundreds of people. Then she comes across a, a woman that can give her information, Nora. Yeah, information as to where Abby is. She doesn't want to give up her friend. Nora literally says, "I'm not giving up on my friends. I'm not giving my friends up. Do what you want. I'm dead anyway. I'm bleeding to death, and I've inhaled the spores. I'm done." And then you see um, Ellie just say to her, look, you're not dead yet. You still got two days. And I can make those two days an absolute nightmare for you. I can make your last few days an agonising hell. Absolute, you're going to be begging to die, right? And then the woman, Nora, says, I'm still not telling you. I ain't telling you nothing. I ain't betraying my friends. And then that's when you see, like, Ellie's face. And it actually does look... It's quite disturbing, actually. Right? Because, like, then you, you can actually... You actually see Ellie, like, summoning the dark passenger. Right? You can see, like, the... The... Evil... You know, taking over her, and you see her face, and then her emotions, and her breathing, and then she's just basically summoning the killer, the dark passenger, to take over and do work, right? And then it just cracks her um, over her face with it, and then you hear her crying, and then you hear the sound of metal, solid metal, versus bone and flesh and sinew, you know, just implode under the metal and then she hits her again and you hear that sound that soft crunch as she hits her and she, she's crying right and then you can tell ellie just did it until she gave up the information that she needed to i don't know man i don't know i don't know and then you got abby's story where you show see nora is that one of the doctors there or something like that you know, and she's actually like a, a nice person. So you got Ellie on the other side, you know, torturing, beating people in the horrific, merciless way possible. And on the other side, in Abby's story, that same person is actually a really nice person that actually saves people. Come on, bro. What are we doing here? And then even in the very, very ending, you know, you have like a, a brand new area. You know, first of all, Ellie gets an ending where she's with um, JJ, Dana, who's pregnant, and she gives birth to the, the baby, right? Jesse. I said Jesse. Sorry when I said Jesse back then, because Jesse's actually the name of the father of Dana's. Uh, that's the first name that came to mind. Sorry. Not well, two people can be called Jesse. We can have somebody in the wolves called Jesse, and, you know, one of the not main character, a character called Jesse, you know. 
JJ's dad, who gets just dead, shot in the face, drop of a dime. Oh, Jesse's dead. He was actually a pretty cool character as well, and he just got offed. Like, it's just puzzling to me, man. Like how they just constructed this game and put all the ideas and say this is the character's gonna die this is the character's going to make it this is the character that's going to get randomly um cut or infected right but they're not going to show it or whatever they just they just they got they got got right like i've seen you see abby in countless situations where she's fighting against clickers or bloaters or whatever right and she doesn't get scratched at all or nothing yeah if you look at last of us one you have like what um i think it's henry he was in like one little skirmish right he got scratched and then he turned so for like tess in last of us one she got scratched and she got scratched don't know how well randomness she got scratched but you've seen joel getting like grabbed and you know everything and by infected nothing ever happened to him last of us one you know i hate that stuff where the main characters they have like a, it's so obvious that they have got an immunity they're invincible they can't be hurt they can't nothing bad can happen to them and this game just does that so much for abby you know it got to a point where i didn't actually want ellie to pursue Abby because I felt I had the feeling like Ellie's gonna die. If Ellie fights this character and it comes down to it, I know Naughty Dog are going to choose Abby. 100%. 100%. But the thing that's weird is the fact that the game cuts after Abby batters Ellie but still spares her and then goes off with Lev. And then you come back to um, Ellie and all of a sudden she's in a beautiful, like kind of like looks like a mystic area, right? Like it looks like a dream world, right? Her hair is different. She's got different hair. Her face looks, her face looks so nice, man. Like that her features were so lovely, right? I mean, when I say features, I mean like, her face expression was just soft. It wasn't like something about her face, her features, her expression in the main game just made her so unlikable. She had like a horrible aura about her. But then in that ending part where she was on the farm, living on the fame with the farm with um, Dana and JJ, her face kind of softened up and she had like nice face expression. I actually like that version of Ellie more than anything. I was thinking so why wasn't where was this version of Ellie throughout the whole game? I wish this version of Ellie was in the game. I liked the way her clothes were. I liked the way she was like making faces with JJ in the mirror. The way she was talking with Dana. But then when even doing that situation, yeah, I thought to myself, what is going on here? Am I is this a dream? Something bad is gonna happen, innit? It's gonna be like PT or something like that. Ellie is still suffering from She's having like trauma from um, Joel. She's not over Joel's death. And then she says to Dana, I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't do, I'm not me. I can't live like this. I have to go after Abby. And Dana says, if you go after her, we're done. There's no JJ, there's no me, you're on your own. And then Ellie just says, if that's what it's got to be, that's what it's got to be. Ellie goes to like some mad place in Santa Barbara after Lev and Abby right and she's godlike she kills like all these new enemies called the rattlers she gets caught in a trap stabbed impaled but she's still bloody fighting going on ellie is godlike man she godlike and she she manages to fight her way through all these rattlers and the rattlers have got like a mad story as well basically they just like to capture people make them work for them if they try to escape or do any type of madness yeah they chain them up have them get scratched or caught by an infected and they chain them up and let them change into an infected and there's notes on them like so they have got like an interesting story but i don't know why they'd make a whole brand new area with these new characters with these new enemies yeah just for like a short 
mixed in a short bit of story. But I did like that Santa Barbara area. It was pretty cool. You know, I mean, if but that end fight with Ellie and Abby was actually the fight mechanics garbage. Yeah, but let's be honest, the whole mechanics in that whole game were garbage. It's literally cut and paste from the first game. There's no innovation in terms of the story. As I said before, you've got a massive world with lots of buildings that you can go into and there's nothing but drawers, doors and cupboards. And what is in those drawers, doors and cupboards? They have all the same thing. Upgrading resources. Resources to upgrade your guns. Resources to upgrade your abilities. And that's it. Nothing else. And upgrade your weapons. But I said that, yeah. That's it. And, yeah, cards. Can't forget the cards with Ellie and the coins with Abby. But that's it. There's nothing else. I mean, look, you're going through an area with Ellie. You know, I think there's like one or two cutscenes where you come across. Um, you might have a cutscene where Ellie plays the guitar. Yeah, which they do show a lot of cool, amazing flashbacks with Ellie and Joel. And it's just amazing, man. Because it just makes you think of towards the ending of the game. Where Joel, they go through like I think a zoo and you find the giraffe. And then, you know, you actually, a giraffe, like a normal, beautiful, you know, uncorrupted, not an infected giraffe, you know. Unbelievable. And it just makes you think like, I would love a game where you just go through the world and they're surviving and it's just through them and they're going through like these type of mad adventures with each other and they do like little bits of story in the game that have got those things contained in them which is basically the game but I don't like seeing that type of stuff man because that stuff has got no future this guy is dead this girl gets a bad ending I don't want it I'm pissed off it's like giving me hope but then you snuff out the hope when I'm embracing that hope of having something amazing, you snuff it out with the reality that this character, Joel, dies brutally and this girl is going to lose absolutely everything and she gets a miserable ending. Come on, man. What are we doing? What are we doing here? It's crazy. And then, and then in that ending, that fight, yeah, which is, as I say, visually amazing. Visually is godlike but in terms of the mechanics it's all bullshit it's all scripted there's nothing there you just attack and you counter nothing to it rubbish right but the fight is very visceral and visually amazing you go through everything right and in the ending ellie has a chance to kill abby and she doesn't do it which to be honest with you i'll be very honest i didn't care at that point you know, when Ellie got to Abby and it looked like she was going to kill Abby, I just thought to myself, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Like, even though I know it is to avenge Joel, it still got me, I think, like, why am I conflicted? I don't even like Abby. This game, bro, I don't even care anymore, man. I just thought to myself, just don't let Ellie die, you know? Abby can go, but I don't care. I don't care about this anymore, right? But then the fact that Ellie is the chance to kill Abby, then Abby bites off Ellie's fingers, and then Ellie just stops, not because her fingers are bit off, but because she makes a decision. She has the flashback of Joel, and that moment, her last moment with Joel in Last of Us 2 was when she told Joel, I, I can't forgive you, but I can try. Catch you later, Joel. And then Joel is left, like, you see, like, tear in his eye. And that's the last thing she says to him? That's mad. That's heartbreaking, bro. Joel, man. He's a cool character, bro. He is a godlike character, actually. And they do him like that. Mad. Madness. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. And then she just stops. But I do think that was the first time she had a flashback of Joel in that whole game where Joel wasn't just murdered. But she was having that flash while she was killing. So why did she stop? And just like that, what was it all for? What was the whole hunt for? What was your whole adventure for? What was you leaving Dana 
and JJ for, for nothing. You've achieved nothing. And then it goes back, you see Ellie going back, well, Abby takes Lev and goes off in a boat somewhere. And then you see Ellie going back to the farm or whatever it was, where she was with Dana and JJ and they're gone. House is desolate, emptied out. She finds the guitar, Joel's guitar, and she tries to play it, she can't even play it because her fingers are missing. Like Abby just bit off her fingers. So now she can't even play the guitar properly. The last remaining thing, memory that gives makes her closer to Joel is by playing the music that he taught her. She can no longer do that because her fingers are missing. So they just took everything from her. This game is garbage, bro. Like it's garbage. Not the naughty dog. P um, creators are in contempt of their fan base, man. Like, I weren't with that game at all. I weren't with it at all. I mean, the only thing that I'll give them, and not also, the game's got no replayability because the story is garbage, the gameplay is repetitive, the there's nothing to the only thing you can do with a second uh, playthrough is basically get everything leveled up max. But do you even care about that because the gameplay is trash? Story is garbage. It's boring. It's boring. They purposely didn't want you to play through the game another time. You're never going to make a game with su a such boring gameplay, such uninspired, uninnovative um, game, um, fighting game, gameplay mechanics, and a terrible story like that. Long, arduous. You, you, you put the game's progression behind a grind wall. You know, to proceed through story, you need to um, you need to clear this boring gameplay loop of going here, finding the generator, taking uh, the wire from this generator. Can't get around, throw it over the fence, plug it in, opens that door. Stealth kill these tickers. Stealth kill these clickers. Go here, find the key or something like that. Um, kill another bunch of clickers, another bunch of um, infected, kill some WLF members, go through this area. Gameplay loop is boring, man. It's literally just kill this area, solve this puzzle where you have to throw this over this bit here, go through there, and that's it. Boring. Seven years, man, this is what you do. They literally killed a franchise just for this one game. I heard that this game has made like broken records, but in doing that, they have alienated pretty much their whole fan base. So I hope it was worth it. They traded millions just to try to prove a point, and for the all for, for all that money. So whatever. I don't personally think it was worth it. If I'm, if, if I'm keeping it 100 But yeah That's all I really wanted to talk about it Yeah If you've played Last of Us 2 uh, I'd like to know what you guys think You know of this game uh, What do you think of my uh, Perspective on the game about Ellie not being likeable And giving her a garbage storyline And you know just Nothing like we got cheated Out of a godlike adventure you know, I mean, they sold us. I mean, I feel like they broke some laws in this game, man. Advertising the game, having Joel with Ellie. You know, when there was an advert, when you saw Ellie jump down uh, from some high place and then somebody grabbed her and she turned around and then in the advert, Joel said, um, you think I'd let you do this alone, kiddo? And in the full game, that same scene happened, but it wasn't Joel, it was Jesse instead. So they've misled people thinking they're going to be going on a godlike adventure with Joel and they're not. So I don't know, man, because they made hundreds of millions on this game. And I'm positive that they've broken some type of law in, mis in you know, misdirection or I don't know. But anyway, wonder what you guys think of this game. Um, if you've played it, um, if you made it this far, thank you. You're the best. And um, yeah. Stay tuned for my next video, which I'm going to be talking about um, Xbox. 
right? Because Xbox have made some um, interviews where they're saying that they're not going to be doing any first party exclusives, you know, which I think is dumb, right? Even though they are still working on Halo, Forza and Gears. Yeah, but they're not going to have anything new. So I'm going to do a video on that. But yeah, Warriors, on to my next video. Stay blessed. Take care. Stay safe. Be better. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.